Hello and welcome to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Atengi Manuel. I know it's been a whole week since we've been here, but we're here now. So grab your cup of coffee, grab your book, grab your pen for those who like to take notes. And we're going to have a very great show today. Remember, you can always catch us on uh, our social media handles, on Twitter, on our Facebook, and on our YouTube. You can also catch us on our website at houseoftalentug.com. Now, today in the house, we have a man who has been here before. And uh, due to public demand, he's back again. You know, he's a very wise barrister. He has been around the coffee game for a while. He has been into some research. He has been into barista competitions. And he'll be telling us, you know, more about that. And the best thing about him is that he's a very down-to-earth person, he's a very humble guy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Chiganda Ibrahim, back to the coffee break. Ibra, yes please. How are you? I'm okay, how are you? I'm okay, it's very good to have you back. I'm very, very happy. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been uh, a while. What have you been up to, basically, you know? I have been uh, working on a lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. On station, yeah. some small field work, okay. trying to design some few projects for myself. Yeah. Yeah. So are these things like top secret? You can't let us know. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you want us to wait. You know, yeah, till you it have comes to out. wait until uh -huh. the right time. Yeah. And we are really cooking something new. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I, I really personally I can't wait to see what you have in store for us. Yeah. yeah? Sure. Now, um, I know that you have a, an SCA certification. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, how does one get that certification? And after getting it, what does it mean to you as a barrister to have that certification? Okay, the SCA certification. It was like uh, a chance for me, yeah. like like luck. So there was uh, a group that that uh, so much into coffee, it's yeah. like a coffee platform, yeah. and uh, there was this link that was moving around. So like, let me try it and see. So I applied, and luckily enough, I was called and yeah. a company World Coffee Bar. So we had uh, a trainer from Nairobi. One of the authorized SCA trainers, yeah. so we had to take up the course and get done. We did exams and I passed. Yeah, yeah, that's when I got the certification. Yeah. So, what kind of training do you guys do in this course, and was it different from the training that you already had before that? No, it was almost the same, only that uh, it was more of an advanced an skill. An advanced course. Yeah. So it was basing on uh, sensory skill and green grading, of which you first acquire the best quality control yeah. skills. Okay. Then you go ahead and advance. Yeah. Yeah. So you talked about, you know, someone coming in from out to basically take you guys through the course. Yeah. So don't we have also people in Uganda who can take us through the same course? Do we need to go outside to bring people in? I think we have uh, potential people. Yeah. Like qualified Q and R graders, if I'm to say. But uh, I think this is an organization, the ASCA, Specialty Coffee Association yeah. of America. So they have to send uh, an authorized trainer within that kind of organization to come yeah. and train. Yeah. So do you have any future goals of maybe also becoming a trainer with the same? That's my goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the first SCA trainer in Uganda. Yeah. yeah. So what, what is it going to take for you to get to that level? It's all about connections, yeah. making friends and reading practicing yeah, yeah that's all. well i hope you made enough friends you know <laughs> yeah, I've made a lot of friends. <laughs> to get to yeah. that spot yeah um you're now working at the coffee wild bar and um how long has it been now two years two years yeah, so before half. before you got a job there what were you doing in that period before wild coffee bar uh i was doing some it's like a sport support staff with the Uganda Coffee Development Authority. Yeah. So we would go and brew coffee to people like in different regions. Yeah. I've been to Mbara, I've been to Kasese, I've been to Movende, I've been to Kagade, I've been to Jinja, I've been to Mbale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I've been helping out with uh, some UCD officials yeah. to carry out the promotions and trainings. Yeah. yeah. So now you get a new job at the Wild Coffee Bar, you yes. know. How has it been for you? Um, trans transitioning from traveling all over the place, to being at a station, at a you know, station. <laughs> in one place, you know, has the, has the experience been for you? Well, it was a new experience for me because yeah. I was so much involved into traveling. Yeah. Then I was like, okay, let me see what really happens at the station. Because I believe at the station, this is where you meet each and every person, yeah. like in one station. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you talked about, you know, traveling all over Uganda, which was, you know, your favorite destination, one that you can't forget. <laughs> Pardon? 
Yeah, your favorite destination. You said you've been to Mubende, yeah. you've been to Masaka, all these different places. Mm -hmm. So, in your experience, you know, which was the best place you ever went to? Fort Porto. <laughs> <laughs> Why was Fort Porto the best place? A among other things we can talk about, you know. Fort Porto, it's a very cool place. Yeah. Now it, it's like a city, it became a city and it's growing at a very fast rate. Yeah. Yeah, more, it, okay, it's more of a tourism city. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice food, cool environment. Yeah. Yeah. There's something, I, I, I believe there's something you're missing out there. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I thought you would have said, you know, uh, you know, good environment, the ladies out there. <laughs> uh, but by the time I, I was in Fort, I yeah. think uh, two weeks back, yeah. I was in Fort. Actually, it was my first, first time to be in Fort Porto. Yeah. So I had a limited time to, you know, to move around. But the time that I really had yeah. was really so amazing. I can yeah. see it from your face. So you're planning to go back to Fort Porto on That's your own. You know, just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's amazing. Um, it's good to have you back on the show. Um, we were talking yesterday and you told me that you are into some coffee research. Yeah. Yeah, so what kind, what kind of research were you doing before and you know, where did you reach with it? Was it successful? You know, research, <laughs> you can always fail yeah, yeah, or it yeah. can be successful. So how was that research? So I got, no, I, 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 I got into coffee research when I was still at campus through the coffee club, yeah. Chamogo University Coffee Club. Yeah. By then, uh, I was struggling to look for a place for internship. Then my friend recommended me there, so I applied. Yeah. So they welcomed me very, very well, and I was given this opportunity to get more knowledge about coffee. Coffee growing, uh, plant diseases, agronomy, a lot of stuff. Yeah. So uh, I went back for my second internship. That's when I think I was doing my research for, for campus. Yeah. But luckily enough, didn't, it, we didn't complete the research. <laughs> <laughs> had some challenges around there. Yeah. So I had pressure from the university. I started it late. So it was, it was more of experiment. You set an experiment, you give it more time, almost like two months, yeah. so that you can get valid results. And you're supposed to replicate it and get accuracy yeah. in the results. So I reached a point when I had pressure from from my supervisor, I had pressure on my own station supervisor. So like, ah, I need to graduate as soon as I can. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to find ways of getting done and graduate. Yeah. But now, right now, I think I have a lot of time. Yeah. Now I've come to realize that I need to get back to research. Yeah. yeah. I think for most barristers, you know, m most of them just focus on, you know, working at the station. Yeah, um, serving coffee, but no one really gets back into research. You know, because I believe that that is a very important part for anyone, for a barrister, for a farmer, for anyone really involved in the coffee business. And I think it's something that we should really encourage people to yeah, do. Yeah, true. You know, because you don't hear of people doing coffee research <laughs> in Uganda. <laughs> research is there. People are doing uh, research. Yeah, yeah but it, it, it's on a very small scale. Yeah, right, yeah. right now I think it's more of a, a, a government organization. Like, a, okay, it's owned by the government. Yeah, from UCDA. Uh, there is another, it's part of uh, the narrow mm. group, the National Coffee Research Institute. Yeah. So it's a common known institute that handles coffee research and cocoa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so whatever research that comes around published. Yeah. It's from those guys. Yeah. I was actually talking to one of the guys from narrow, uh, Owen. Owen. Yeah, yeah, Owen says that, you know, one day we should go and visit him in the field, you know, yeah. we'll get a better understanding of, you know, the whole coffee process. Yeah, yeah but uh, you were talking about having challenges, you know, on campus and you had to find ways like, you know, all Ugandans do, you know, to finish. Um, for the two years you've been working, yeah, what are some of those challenges that you have met as a barrister? As a barrister? Yeah. One, resources. Yeah, what kind of resources? Uh, like personal resources. Remember, being on station, it doesn't end there. Like I'm going to stand on a, on a station, yeah. do uh, maybe cappuccinos or espressos. Yeah. There's some added skill that you're supposed to have. You need to make research. Yeah. I never had a phone by the time I joined Wild Coffee Bar. <laughs> <laughs> I never had a PC, uh, never had equipment. Yeah. yeah. But I had to find ways. I got my first phone, smartphone. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to research more how you can brew a perfect espresso. Uh, more so how you can come up with a very nice presentation during competitions. Mm. So by, by the time I joined Wild, I was freshly from competing yeah. on the national level. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so 
Is that the only challenge or there were, you know, other Another challenges? Another challenge that I, mean, I had was yeah. uh, time management. Remember, our session was supposed to be there at a particular time, mm. of which it was something new to me. <laughs> yeah, time and meeting different people of different characters, different yeah. behavior. So it was kind of challenging to me to, yeah. to cope up with them, but yeah. I managed. Yeah, I remember uh, one of the barristers we had last week was saying, you know, time managing is very important because if you're supposed to be at the station by 9 and you're supposed to start work at 9, you know, then you get there at 9, yet you're supposed to already be working. It's, yeah. it's going to be a bad day for you. Yeah, the customers true, true. have come, you're, you know, doing stuff in a hurry, yeah. you're a bit stressful. Yeah, so I believe, like you said, time management is uh, a very important thing. Yeah, and, you know, to barristers out there, keep time. You know, sometimes time people very, want very breakfast. Precious. You yeah. know, someone is going to work, he wants his coffee by nine so that he can make it to the office yeah. and you're starting at nine, yeah? Yeah, so what are some of those things? You know, apart from the challenges, I believe that, you know, life gives us challenges, but there are also good sides to it, you know? What are some of those things that you've appreciated over, you know, the two years, over the time you were at campus doing this research, things you've appreciated about the process that you've been through with coffee? One, uh, my boss, yeah. yeah. My boss is very, very, very supportive. Yeah. Is that a Ugandan boss? No, he's a Norwegian <laughs> boss. <laughs> very, very, very supportive yeah. and very understanding. So he gives you room to improve and grow. Then another thing that I really got from the station is uh, meeting different people. Yeah. Yeah. Meet friends. I've made actually friends. I've made friends in the some Colombian guys that came at the station. Mm. Uh, Greece guys. US, so I've met a lot of people. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, never in your mind that you believe that you want to meet all these classes of people. Yeah? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the good thing about, you know, working in the service industry. You basically get to meet a lot of people you never thought, yeah. you know, you were You're going to ever meet. Exposed. Yeah. So now with this kind of exposure that you have, you know, to different kind of customers, to different work environments, you know, to traveling, you know, up and down the country. Yeah. What is your dream? you know, when it comes to coffee. You know, there are guys who want to open, you know, coffee houses, there yeah, are guys who want shops, to right. get into research. What, what, what's your dream? My dream is, one, to be a SCA trainer, yeah. authorized, and to also chase for Q&R. So I want to be Q&R certified. Yeah. Then from there, uh, I've seen very many people opening up uh, coffee shops and coffee academies. Yeah basically barista yeah so me i want to change the whole game right now we are struggling to bring quality aspect on the board yeah so we can't produce much coffee but of low quality yeah so quality could be our next target in the yeah. next probably two years from yeah. now <laughs> yeah so my dream is to one to have a a quality control school yeah because right now we have limited number of people that can analyze coffee. Yeah. yeah. Then uh, my other dream is to have an on station lab, mm. science lab, <laughs> <laughs> on the farm. Yeah. So where you can do a uh, small research, can do a uh, small analysis, probably soil, water, micronutrients, yeah. acidity, pH, temperature. So that uh, when we are processing coffee, we can measure all the parameters on the farm yeah. rather than picking samples. You go to maybe Kawanda or you go to UNBS, you measure the breaks. Yeah. yeah, so that's my dream. So we only have you UNBS and Kawanda this time, you know, to help us with that process. Yeah, they can help, but uh, I think it's when most people approach them. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's what I believe. Yeah. But if we construct a fully equipped state-of-the-art science laboratory on the farm, yeah. it's more easier. Yes. Yeah. So with that plan in mind, okay, what are some of the steps that you're taking right now to make sure that you get there? Because it's one thing having a dream. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's another thing, you know, working towards that dream. So what are some of those steps that you are taking to get there? One, uh, getting done with the with certification, both SCA and Q&R. Yeah. So I believe within that process, you're able to meet different people that can, su can support you the other way around. Yeah. <clears throat> then uh, can also liaise with uh, 
with the national bodies, yeah. like UCDA and National Coffee Research Institute. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a break right now. But before we go for the break, when we come back, we'll be talking about how the different stakeholders in the coffee business can basically help to improve the business. We have with us here Ibrahim, who will be telling us this very wise guy, very down to earth. We'll be right back after this. This is the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. Yeah. But uh, first of all, if you're passionate about what you're going to do, yeah. I believe in all work, we have to do mistakes. So my first experience at work was, when I reached at work, uh, you know you have to be confident when you're doing something. Even yeah. if it's wrong, in our industry you have to be confident. Once you're <laughs> confident, you give support of it. Yeah. So my first cup to make was the customer and uh, I made a mistake on it because the waitress came and gave me a cappuccino single. I said, I, I made it and gave it to her. Then she told me, no, the, the guest wanted a flower on it. Uh. <laughs> I did not make a flower. So I said, what I've given you is what is supposed to go. I cannot make another cup of coffee. Yeah. Please take that to a customer. If he calls me, I'll explain why. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I started. Yeah. But uh, to me, when you love what you're doing, even when you make mistakes, yeah. still you will support that mistake yeah. and it will go. Yeah. So I've loved the, I have, I've lo I have love for the coffee for the industry. I have love for what I'm doing. And when I'm on the station, trust me, I don't want anyone to disturb me. Yeah. <laughs> even if you are who, even if you are the boss, yeah. once I'm in my bar, it is my turn. It's your I wait for my shift to get done, yeah. then you can bring me coffee. Interesting. If, if you're watching us, this is House of Talent, the coffee break. We are having some fun with Isaac and Charles here. You know, Charles telling us about his first experience and he was supposed to make a certain cup of coffee, which he did not do. But these are the different experiences that we have. So if you're a barista and it's your first day of the job, relax. You got this. Have some confidence. <laughs> we have you here at the coffee break and we're going to take a break right now. But when we return, we still have that part of we're going to brew a cup of coffee which i believe is going to be very tasty okay. and we'll also be talking about how can we set up a successful coffee business which i think very many people are trying to get into right now so we'll take a break right now this is the coffee break on house of talent television Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television and this is the only coffee show in the country. So if you're not here, you're basically missing out on everything. If you're a coffee farmer, if you're a barista, if you're a business owner, if you're just a consumer of coffee or you just love anything about the coffee process, this is the show for you. Uh, before we went for the break, we're talking to Ibra about his experience, you know, um, where he is, uh, where he started from, you know, the different places he has visited in Uganda. and. Coming back to the show now, we're going to get into the time of where we talk about, you know, the different strategies that the different people in the coffee business can help to improve the business. Basically, the baristas, the farmers, the, the owners, UCDA, NARO, everyone who's involved in this process. Why is coffee in Uganda still, you know, at a very low state yet we can actually boost it up? Well, Ibra, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Um, coffee in Uganda, you know, it's, it's very amazing that Uganda actually exports a lot of coffee yeah it yeah. exports more coffee and less is consumed yes less is consumed yeah. here okay which means there is a gap or a loophole somewhere that we are not really taking the best of we're not using yeah and uh, I believe that we always need to improve the coffee business okay so there are different stakeholders like I said you have the farmers you have the baristas you have the roasters you have the business owners yeah. you know all these uh, groups of people all right and I believe that each one of them plays a very important role in what they're doing okay yeah, true. so we're going to start from the basics okay yeah. how can a farmer play their part okay to improve this coffee business especially in Uganda in Uganda uh, right now what I've realized uh, we have 
very many farmers and more are still coming up yeah. in uh, coffee farming. Yeah. And their major, major part that they should play is uh, growing the coffee, taking care of it, yeah. then following all the rightful procedures to manage the garden, harvesting the most, most important thing. Yeah processing up to drying yeah yes well um the farmers in uganda basically you know local farmers yeah some of them are our fathers and our yeah. grandfathers and they haven't really you know studied anything about coffee well uh, they basically got the information from their fathers and their grandfathers and say you know what this is what we do they grow coffee just like they would grow maize or anything else okay yeah. they don't have all that information so how can these farmers get information that will basically make their yield better and you know the type of uh, coffee farming would actually grow how can they get that information so this is one we actually have realized uh, since we have now other participants in the coffee value chain yeah i'll i'll talk about the the government itself because it's one body that's trying to encourage farmers to grow more coffee because yeah. we have a target to to hit yeah so uh I'll talk about the UCDA, which is the main main body, body that oversees coffee operations in Uganda. Yeah. So they have really tried so hard to provide enough services to the farmers, yeah. starting from how coffee should be planted, how coffee should be harvested, and how coffee should be processed, to how coffee should be dried. At least they have done their part. Yeah. Now it's upon the farmers to put all the services into consideration so yeah. that you can have a very good quality cup. Yeah. yeah. So imagine I'm a farmer, okay? I have known that, you know, this is the way we do things and there is no changing it. And let's say you're working in the UCD, okay? And yeah. you have to come down and convince me like, you know what? You need to change, okay? Otherwise, we're not going to go anywhere. So as an official of UCD, let's say, okay? Yeah. How would you convince me, a local farmer, to change my ways so that I can be more valuable to this, you know, coffee process? Okay. Now, since we export more coffee and less is consumed, yeah. and remember, the coffee that we export is analyzed. Yeah. So once it's bad coffee, it will have to be rejected or sent back. Yeah. So now the thing starts back to the farm. So as me, an UCDA official, mm. I'll come to you, show you how coffee should be handled. So coffee how it should be planted. Let's say you have one acre. So instead of planting any haole, mm. I'll advise you, you know what? Let's do a spacing of maybe 10 feet by 10 or 8 by 8 yeah. so that you can have this coffee grow well and in terms of yielding you have more. Rather than having a very crowded plantation mm. to give you difficulties in uh, managing, weeding, uh, maybe pruning, you'll find hardships, yeah. even harvesting, you get, because it will yeah. be very, very overcrowded. So I'll advise you that if you have your coffee spaced, you have room for, for pruning, weeding, and even feeding the manure, yeah. even harvesting itself, it's very, yeah. very easy for you. Then another thing, harvesting. When you harvest uh, the whole coffee, yeah. maybe, m m most farmers have been using stripping method, so, uh, I will tell you that when you use stripping, mm. you're actually damaging the what? The plant. So the, the plant is more subjected to, to drying than giving you more berries in the nearby future. Yeah. So I'd rather advise you to select pick the only red ripe cherries yeah. so that you can come back still tomorrow, get more coffee, yeah. rather than stripping all the green and unripe, yeah. immatures and everything. Yeah. yeah, so that you won't come back tomorrow and get more coffee. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think with such an understanding, uh, someone can actually see their part that they're playing. Because yeah. I think that sometimes the farmers just grow to make ends meet, you know. They grow to make money. But sometimes no one really goes down to explain to them how important they are. Because without the farmer, there is no Would coffee. No coffee. <laughs> the rest of everyone <laughs> yeah. in that process basically, you know, uh, wouldn't matter. Mm. So the farmers have done their part, you know, they have added value now. Yes. Now we move to the next guys, um, the middlemen basically. The middle They're those guys who move coffee <laughs> from one place from one to place, the next. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what, what is the middleman's role first of all? And also how, how would he bring value to this process? Now the middlemen have also done their part. Yeah. But in, in the long run, 
Mm. I think uh, we no longer need their, their, their services. services. <laughs> yes. Why? Uh, we've come to realize that middlemen are actually cheat farmers. Yeah. So their role is to connect the farmer to maybe the first buyer, probably the exporter. Yeah. So he will go down to the farmers, be like, how much do you sell your coffee? They yeah, sell so maybe 8,000 per kg. Yeah. Like, no, I'm giving you 5,000. Be like, okay, since I have kids to take to school, I need money, give me that 5,000 per kg. Yeah. So he will buy all the coffee. Then he will go to the first buyer, probably the export or the processor. Yeah. Be like, have this coffee, I'm selling it at 12,000. You get? Yeah. So this, this uh, process or the export will be like, no, I'm giving you 11,000 per kg. Like, okay, cool, let me go with the money. Yeah. So you, you can see the difference between um, 11 and 5,000. Yeah. So there's a difference of 6,000 yeah. profit. That's yeah. very, very much. More than 100%. Yes. So you, we find that uh, most of the profits at the farm level are retained by the what? By the middlemen. Mm. So let's get back to what? To the farmer. Yeah. Yes. So, if we're eliminating these guys, okay, now, how will the exporters get their coffee, how will the processors get their coffee? Should they go down by themselves, or there is something else we can do in that mix? Actually, there's something that I've realized. Uh, most exporters have started working together with farmers. Mm. Yeah, they go straight to the farmers, they get a certain amount of coffee, and they process it. Yeah. So, they, they pay them still enough money, yeah. But in the wrong one, there's something lacking between the yeah. gate. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, okay, now we have the farmers, we have the middlemen who we are going to slash out <laughs> yes, anytime from now because basically they are cheating, you know, yeah. the farmers. Um, so we move on now to the next, uh, the processors and the exporters. Okay. Exporters. I believe that just as the middlemen, also, sometimes the exporters themselves and the processors <laughs> also cheat, right? <laughs> the <laughs> farmers. Yeah. Yeah, but still. Um, how, how can the exporters and the processors basically also be of value? You know, what strategies can they use to improve the coffee business? Okay. Uh, the processors, mainly their main, main role is to still to add value to the fresh mm. harvested cherries. Yeah. One, they select out the unripe and uh, the immacures so that they can remain with only red ripe cherries mm. for quality aspects. Then, they go ahead and follow different processing technique, whether washed or natural or semi-washed. Yeah. Get until they get uh, the final product within the primary processing stage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then th this is where the exporters now come in yeah. to take uh, dry coffee, either in green beans mm -hmm. or in dry cherry or dry parchment. Yeah. Then the exporter, because what, what I realized, most exporters do have uh, pro secondary processing facilities. They have the haulers, commercial haulers. Yeah. They have uh, graders. They have gravity tables that can select out uh, less desa beans from heavy beans, yeah. small beans, then the colored beans, blacks, and everything. Yeah. So they also play a role in uh, grading the coffee to different sizes, to different grades. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now the processors, the exporters have done their job, yeah. okay? So we keep moving on up in the chain, okay? Now it goes, uh, let's say, to the coffee shops, okay? Yeah. These guys have done their part, they have moved it. Uh, okay, let's forget about the one being exported, okay? Yeah. Let's think about the one being used yeah. in Uganda, okay? Yeah. So we have the CEOs or the owners of oh, these coffee. different coffee shops yeah. uh, who basically have the role of getting the coffee from where it is to their coffee shops yes. okay and um, they play an important role because without them uh, the process would have stopped at a certain point there would be no consumption you know of uh, the coffee so what part do the ceo plays he play here and um, how can they use their position as a ceos as business owners you know to also improve you know the coffee business when uh, I'll talk about the coffee owners yeah. or the secondary reprocessing facility owners, yeah. one thing they've done is to provide employment opportunities to the youths. Yeah. yeah. So when you move into those facilities, you may find uh, most of the workers are youths. Yeah. Yeah. So at least they've played their part to yeah. provide jobs to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah as the barristers, yeah. we have the rosters, we have the 
quality controllers. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to take another break. We've been talking about how basically the different stakeholders in the coffee business can help to improve uh, this business in Uganda. We have talked about the farmers, we have talked about the exporters. And coming back to the show, after this break, we'll be talking about the role of the barristers because I know the barristers, we are very many, yeah, <laughs> and the roasters. So we'll take a break now, grab, grab a cup of coffee, and we'll be right back. This is the Coffee Break Show on House of Talent Television with me, Emmanuel. So I used to love the way our barista used to present his cups. Yeah. Uh, for example, one day he presented some nice coffee. It was a cappuccino, very nice, presented. And I, I asked her, I asked him, what do you, how do you make this? He said, you go to a school and study. Yeah. So I used to love the way, the passion he had. So I said one day I should learn this. So I kept on serving, serving his, serving his what? His orders. But I found out that most of the orders were according to the way he was feeling. You know, baristas present their cups according to the way they are feeling, yeah. according to the mood. In case he left home and he's sad, no, he's not happy, you will see the results in the cup. <laughs> in the cup. <laughs> but when you see something beautiful, just know he's so happy. Yeah. So yeah. The, the passion he had and the love he used to put in the cup yeah. really encouraged me to join the school. Not until I got to learn about Isaac at the, at the Pro Plus. Yeah. Then I came with my some of my friends so we are now doing that course <music> people at the moment mm. are, are struggling to understand the older generation because mm. times have changed technology has come in. they've moved on yes we're the ones sitting back and wondering what is my child mm. on to tiktok has surpassed what's yap The other one I call, uh, I, I never call it Facebook, it's Bookface. <laughs> Why are you on Bookface? <laughs> Dad, it's Facebook. Yes. Me, I keep saying, yeah. I have a foot amongst the millennials. Yeah. And I understand the traditionalists. Okay. There's a song in the 60s, by the way, and yeah. then in the 90s. 70s, where they're like, parents don't understand. Yes. Ah, remember Prince? Yes. Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. Remember, you can always catch us on our Facebook handle, on our Twitter, and also on YouTube, on our, um, on our website at houseoftalentug.com. Don't ever miss the show if you're a coffee enthusiast, if you love coffee, if you're a CEO, if you're a farmer. Wherever you are in the coffee process, basically, you're very important to the coffee industry, and we need you to take this coffee game to a whole new level. Before we left off, we're talking about how the different uh, stakeholders in the coffee business are playing their part, are adding value to basically take coffee in Uganda to where it's supposed to be. And before we left, we talked about the farmers, we talked about the exporters, we talked about the middlemen who Ibrahim thinks that, you know, are going to be cut off because there are certain shady things that they do here and there. Well, Ibrahim, welcome back to the show. And okay. um, before we went off, uh, we're talking about how, how important are the baristas? Because I know that most people just focus on being a barista. <laughs> you know, everyone wants, you know, to have that cup and, you know, design it very right. well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah. what part do the baristas play? How, how important are they? Actually, I've come to realize that we play a very, very, very big, big part. Yeah. So we are the, we are the mouthpiece of the coffee industry. Yeah. So, for example, uh, maybe we're a very common person. 
you've walked in into a coffee shop, you want to know more about this coffee and you want to have this great, great cup of coffee. Yeah. So the first thing that will give you the impression one is the aromas in the coffee shop. Mm. Like, ah, this coffee smells so, so good. Yeah. So it will give you energy to go and you know what? Can I have a cup of coffee that I'm smelling? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so baristas will play a very, very big role. One, we have to, in fact, we represent the farmer's efforts. Yeah. The moment you brew a very bad, bad cup of coffee, trust me, like, which coffee are you using? <laughs> this coffee is from maybe in Bali. Ah, yeah. Bali coffee is not nice. No, yeah. no, no, no. So you draw that final conclusion according to that cup of coffee that you've made. Yeah. So if you're really a very bad, I don't want to use bad, mm. if, you're, <laughs> if you're not really a good barista, yeah. that thing would still reflect to the what? To the cup. To, to the farmer. It would be like, ah, farmers in, in a certain, say it yeah, <laughs> in a certain uh, region, they yeah. have bad coffee. Just yeah. because he had a very bad coffee from a coffee shop, yeah. that we were using coffee from what? From that region. Yeah. So we are the mouthpiece, uh, so we speak for the farmers, we speak for the coffee. Yeah. So if someone, let me say uh, a Brazilian a gentleman moves from Brazil to Uganda yeah. just to come and have this coffee experience, and he luckily enough finds a very good barista, yeah. explains more coffee, more knowledge about the coffee that he's serving, yeah. and goes ahead and delivers a very nice coffee yeah. cup. So this Brazilian will be like, wow, Ugandan coffee is very, very nice. Yeah. You get just that impression has given him that Ugandan coffee is far, far better than maybe the Brazilian of which yeah. <laughs> we are. <laughs> yeah. So we play a very, very big, big part. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I know that uh, in most coffee schools, people, everyone has to be a barista, basically. And I believe that it's a very good thing. And like you said, you guys are the mouthpiece to the process, yeah. you know. Uh, it's like how people work in the kitchen, they cook and everything, but the food has to finally come out. Yeah. You know, and when the food comes out, people will test it and, you know, they will judge, you know, the process. Yeah. And it's, I, I love how you say that, you know, when someone tests a cup, you know, they will think about where it came from. Yes. Okay. So they will grade those people based on what? On that They're cup. testing. Yeah. And sometimes it's, if, if I don't want to say a bad cup of coffee, <laughs> <laughs> but if the cup is not that good, mm. okay, basically it, it might not be from where it's from. It might just be the barista yeah, yeah, yeah. who didn't do it well. Yeah. yeah. So baristas really need to step up their game. Yeah. Yes. But now the, the last person on this chain mm. is the consumer. Yeah. Okay. And I know that consumers have high demands. Sometimes they'll enter a coffee shop and they'll tell you to make them a drink you've totally never had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so how can these consumers, yeah, also play their part in making this process really good and easier also, you know, yeah. for the other people in the yeah. process? So one thing I want to tell all the coffee consumers out yeah. there, when you're buying this coffee, don't, uh, don't buy it just because someone is buying it or someone is taking coffee just yeah. Yeah. When you buy a cup of coffee, just know that you're impacting a lot to the farmers. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. every coin that you give in to buy that pack of coffee or that cup of coffee, you're helping a farmer. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So one question I always uh, like to ask, uh, let's imagine you're just stationed, okay? Mm -hmm. And this customer walks in and they order a drink that you've never heard of, or they, you know, they saw it somewhere <laughs> and they want you to mix. Yeah, yeah. And you know, because uh, you can't do it for them, Okay, they get a very bad attitude, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. uh, so as a barrister, how do you handle such situations with such customers? Because interpersonal relationship is very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so how would you, as Zebra, handle? I've come and I, I'm shouting at you, yeah, you know. Yeah. How would you handle that? So basically, we, we, have, uh, we have qualities or rules that govern barristers. Most people, okay, most barristers do not know them. Yeah. But I personally, I got no them yeah. when you sh supposed to become under pressure however rude the client is yeah. supposed to become for example you know these are uh, customer care attendants airtel and mtn the way they answer the phone calls however rude you are they will always stick to their yeah. to their professional uh Demeanor. Yes, be like, hello, sir, how can I help you? However rude you are. Yeah. So that's the same thing that we barristers are supposed to, to do. Yeah. We, I happened to, to get a, 
I think uh, he was a white. I didn't know which country he was coming from, but this person was very, very rude. <laughs> very rude. Yeah. So I had to be like very polite, very calm. And you know what? I can't do this. I can't do what you're telling me to do because I have no idea about it. But I can do for you something related to it. Yeah. So we, 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 we had a, a, a menu item that was close to what he was asking for. So I made it very, very nice. So I gave it, I was like, wow, this is actually the best. <laughs> so the person who came in like querying and very rude, we actually became friends. Yeah. yeah. So we are supposed to be very, very calm, under pressure, yeah, yeah. very polite. Mm. Yeah. Interesting, I like how you compared it to being a customer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because sometimes we call those people, you know, we're always yeah. shouting at them. Yeah, but I believe that uh, as a barrister, yeah. basically, you're not only representing the people in the process, but you're also representing the shop where you're working, yes. the coffee shop. Because if one customer has a bad experience, yeah. okay, and word of mouth moves around and they say such and such a yeah. coffee shop doesn't he can have... Burst as a <laughs> you can't barista's a... Yeah. So it basically affects everyone in yeah, the yeah, process. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, for the barristers out there, always remember that. You should be on top of your game when you're dealing with people. You should be very courteous. You should be very calm because uh, situations are going to push you into the corner and you need to handle these situations because at the end of the day, you are serving people. And uh, whatever you do will not only affect you, it will affect the coffee shop, everyone down the process. It will affect this coffee break show. Yeah. You know, everyone <laughs> will have a bad attitude towards uh, coffee. There's another thing that really came into uh, us baristas. Yeah. Uh, we associate with different people of different color. I happen to be one of the victims. <laughs> yeah. So the way we treat uh, whites should be the same, the way we treat the blacks. Yeah. Yes, I happen to, to be a, vac a victim. I was at the coffee shop. So a white lady came in. So I give her full attention. <laughs> so I'm like, What's going on here? Yeah. Aren't we clients? <laughs> I realize that actually it's very, very bad. We yeah. should treat everyone the same. the same, whether white or black, whether female or yeah. male, yeah. whether young or old, yeah. should treat them equally. Yeah. yeah. There's that good customer experience that has to be yeah. general for everyone. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, the best part of the show always, this is the, sh uh, the part that people wait for. Uh, we're going to get into brewing a cup of coffee now, but uh, as we get into it, uh, you told me that you know you've been in different competitions, barista competitions, yes. yeah, and sometimes you've come as the third overall, yeah. you know, sometimes you've come as the second overall, second, yeah. yeah. So where are these uh, competitions held, first of all, yeah, and how does one get into them? So uh, there's always uh, the main body that uh, organize competitions that's yeah. the Uganda Coffee Development Authority so basically barista competitions and cup testers yeah. championship yes so one can get involved into in case they run an advert that we are held we are holding a competition you just have to go and apply it's free yeah. of charge mm. yeah okay so what are some of the things they look for when they're judging this competition as long as you can <laughs> <laughs> if you can yeah. You should go there. You should go. So wh what are they testing you on? On uh, different types of uh, coffee uh, cups that you can make? Uh, on different you know, ways that uh, you can bring out new stuff? Because I believe that yeah. with research, yeah. you can actually develop a product that is only yours. Yes. Yeah? Do yes. they look into some of these things? Uh, they, look at, uh, they look at very many, many things. Mm. One, customer service. Mm. How would you present that coffee yeah. in front of your clients? In that case, the judges. Mm. How do you talk to them? How do you convince them to take your beverage? Yeah. Another thing, how best you make your coffee? So there's always uh, the best espresso of, of the year, yeah. there's best signature, best cappuccinos, yeah. yeah. Well. Best female barista, best male barista yeah. of the year. Then another thing is uh, creativity. That's uh, where the signature drink comes in. Mm. How creative you are to develop a very nice signature drink. Yeah. 
Yes. I think one day we should have you back and you know, just have you make for us <laughs> <signature> <laughs> drink. You know, you can go back in the lab and you know make like yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, ten of those things and come back. Well, uh, we have reached to that part of the show where we get to brew a good cup of coffee, and uh, I'll hand it over to you because <laughs> this is your part. So what we usually do is you know just take the you know viewers through. What do we have here? You know, what type of equipment are we going to use? What type of coffee yeah. are we going to brew? Because there are certain yeah. people at home there who, are, who usually want to take it step by step by step. So, you yeah. know, I'll hand it over to you to just take us through what we're going to brew today. Okay, so in front of us we have a... Uh, it's a new equipment. It's yeah. Actually, it's my second time to use it. Yeah. Uh, why am I using it the second time? Because the first time I used it, it was so interesting. Yeah. So, it, like, it looks, it looks fancy. Yeah, it does. <laughs> But it's a very, very nice paint. It's called a carafe. Yeah. yeah, it originated from those Arabs. Mm. So it, it was used to serve water, wine, coffee, yeah. juice. Yeah. Looks actually interesting. I've not seen one, you know. It. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the, the unique thing is uh, about it, it, uh, it has like a handle where you can serve your beverage from. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to uh, open all this and, you know, yeah. start fidgeting Ball. around. Yeah. yeah. So it operates in the same way uh, a Chemex mm. operates or a V60. So yeah. it has a filter. Yeah. On that for it, it has a filter Hold. holder. Mm. Yes. Okay. But nothing changes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. going to brew our coffee. This is my signature blend. Yeah. Hand grinded. <laughs> <laughs> Hand grinded. So it's a it's a blend of uh, honey processed coffee yeah. from CP. Okay. And a uh, washed bourbon variety okay. from from Burundi. <laughs> so I want to get the bo the better of both worlds. For one from Burundi, one, one from, from Uganda. Uganda. Okay. Everything all combined. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. yeah. So if you're at home following, that's just fall into the process. Get your coffee, and right now we're at the level. You know, we're just putting the coffee into the filter, so that you can basically you know start the process of our brew. So you level off, yeah. and good enough. You don't have a, a wing scale, yeah. so you can still brew. Yeah. The coffee. I, th I think by now the people <laughs> have been watching. You can basically, yeah. you know, uh, assume how much coffee. How you much need. coffee yeah, you need? Yeah. Yeah. Something that is very important. Remember to always, you know, when you're pouring your water, don't pour it just like you're pouring tea. Yeah. You have to pour it in a swirly motion so that you know uh, the water can reach every. You know, part of the coffee. Yeah. Yes, I think this one takes a shorter time to brew. Yeah, like three, three minutes yeah. or two and a half minutes. Two and a half yeah. minutes. Yeah. Okay. For those watching at home and you want to really have a good cup of coffee. You can follow Ibra on Instagram. Actually, I was seeing your Instagram, and you know, um, I'm actually glad that barristers are now seeing the importance of social media. Yeah. You know, seeing you, seeing Swabra Banks, the yeah. coffee goddess, you know, and all the <laughs> <laughs> you guys marketing yeah. yourselves. I believe that um, even if you're a very good barrister, basically, if you don't market yourself, yeah, it's also true. going to be hard for you to get to the next level. True. Yeah, so get onto Instagram, get onto Facebook, onto Twitter. Actually, social, me so social media is one of uh, the platform that we are mm. we are supposed to to be working with so that you can market yourself. Yeah. Right now, uh, I was so surprised to, to have a conversation with the World Barrister comp comp Champion yeah. 2015. That's a statistic. Mm. And he gave me this opportunity that we even had a Zoom meeting. We yeah. had to talk about more uh, of uh, his innovation, the carbonic maceration. Yeah. And he's so excited to come in Uganda. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me that the next time uh, when he comes to Kenya, he'll definitely find a way how we can meet and, you know, yeah. talk and test my coffee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, which is a very good thing. So you see how you got connections, you yeah. know, just off uh, social media. Yeah. And there are very many barristers. Actually, there are very many who are not taking, you know, mm -hmm. advantage of this process. Yeah. It looks like a very good cup of coffee that, you know, we're going to be having today. Something different from Burundi and from Uganda. Uganda. Yeah. yeah. So how did you come up with this blend of, you know, actually then, putting Uganda and Burundi uh, together? At our coffee shop, we, we have different coffee brands from different regions within yeah. Uganda and different countries within the world yeah. yeah we so far we have coffee from burundi congo uh rwanda 
of course Uganda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I happened to test these coffees separately. Mm. Yeah. So I was like, how about if I add this coffee? Because we have very nice coffee that has this kind of complexity. Those those guys that have uh, this the bourbon variety, mm. so it's like a new variety from ours. I was more of SL14 and SL28 and yeah. original Bugiso. So their coffees are very, very nice, yeah. but they have a character that they're lacking, of which our coffees do have. Yeah. So I was like trying to blend in and see. <laughs> <laughs> so you created a marriage of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. I think that's, that's why we need to reach, you know, where people yeah. actually try to do different things with coffee. True. It's, when it gets so monotonous, you know, uh, I think for some people the coffee gets boring. Yeah? Yeah. But when you can do things like this, always keeps like now, let's say for me a customer, always keeps me waiting for what is going to do next, what is Ibra going to do next, you know, the next time I go to visit him at his shop. Yeah, for those who are watching, we're about to partake of our cup of coffee, which I believe is very well brewed. Yeah. Um, before we get there, um, we're still talking about, you know, the different competitions that UCDA holds. There's also the World uh, Barista Championships. Yes. Yeah. Now, I know that there are many baristas out there who might want to get into these competitions. You know, they have the information. Yeah. But they are scared. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, sometimes when you look at a competition like that, you basically get very scared and think, you know what? Can I do this? Do I have, mm -hmm. you know, the knowledge and yeah. everything? So I want you to look into that camera and just yeah. talk to the baristas. Yeah. Let them know that, you know, it's actually a good thing for them, yeah. you know, to get there. So uh, I'll give myself as an example. One, I can't play football. Yeah. I can't play tennis. I can't play, play basketball. Yeah. So competition is like a game to me. Yes, you, you get onto your nerves and get scared, you even shake. But one thing you need to know, uh, this is a learning process. Don't fear to compete. Show what you have. You never know the next time you might actually upgrade. Yeah, there are a yeah. lot of things to learn in a competition. Like, for example, myself, the way I started to compete uh, in 2017, it's not actually the same way that I can compete right now. Yeah. It's totally different. Yeah. So you get to learn more things in the competition. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the last question before we go, because our time is fast spent. Um, the coffee business, okay, is male dominated, mm. okay, and you rarely see very many ladies uh, visible in the process. Let let it mm. be farming, let it be being a barista, let it be being mm. a CEO, okay. Yes. So, w why aren't women, you know, that involved? Why aren't ladies that involved in the coffee business? Is that a matter of ah, these things are for women? <laughs> is it fear? And how can we get more of them involved? Well, in uh, I think this. Uh, I think most female feel like uh, being a barista is more of a, a male job, yeah. or being a farmer is a male thing, or being a quality controller. Yet they don't know that there are other perfect people that we are looking at. So we want to bring this gender equality into the coffee business. I would uh, thank this uh, the International Women Coffee Alliance. It has really done a very good job to encourage yeah. women into the coffee business. When you look at uh, coffee farmers or coffee processors, most of them are women. Yeah. When you look at uh, the quality controllers, they say that women are the best coffee testers. Why? Because they are very subjected to spices when they are cooking. Yeah. They get a lot of flowers from, from us. <laughs> <laughs> so they test a lot of things, yeah. ice cream, yogurt, sweets, yeah. what? So they are good cup testers yeah yes so most of them should actually you know take opportunity yeah Actu i would actually encourage all all the female yeah. to participate in the coffee business yeah. whether owning a coffee shop whether uh, analyzing coffee barista farming yeah. Yeah. yeah we really need them well if you're out there and you're a lady and you're thinking you know what you have no part to play in the coffee business you're very important and uh, you have a very big part to play so take up the mantle you know uh, encourage other ladies encourage the young girls and for the men out there don't 
you know, don't step on the ladies as they're coming up in the coffee, <laughs> <laughs> in the coffee business. Yeah. You should actually encourage them. Well, we've come to the end of our show for today. Uh, Ibra, I just want to thank you for, you know, being on the show. Yeah, thank you thank very you much for, for this opportunity. Yeah. I'm really very happy. Yeah, I believe that, you know, it's not the last time we're going to have you here, <laughs> yeah. you know. Uh, we're always going to have you back, you know, because I believe that uh, as time goes, you know, you grow in knowledge. Yeah. And this is the kind of knowledge that we have. So, you've been on the coffee break with me, Emmanuel and Ibra. Uh, catch us again next time we'll be talking to someone else and if you want to know who that is well you'd have to tune in uh, next time we are on this has been the coffee break on house of talent television my name is atengi manuel till next time have a blessed day